During this Christmas holiday period, I've been going around the nursery, digging out all the stuff that we've left around, discarded, and seeing what can be done about it. Because we're always doing experiments on the nursery, a lot of these experiments either work or don't work, and they get neglected, but nothing is ever lost. One of the great advantages of bonsai is that the longer you keep a tree, as long as it doesn't die, it becomes more valuable. Unlike newspapers and calendars, once the sell-by date is over, it is not worth anything. But with bonsai, the older they get, I know that they can go downhill if you don't style it, but as long as they're alive, they always have some value. So let's look at this. If you come closer, you will see straight away that this is a two needle pine. It's also a Scots pine, but it's a special Scots pine, what we call the dwarf Scots pine, Pinus sylvestris buvrenensis. The needles are so small, it's almost like a picea. If I can show you what the ordinary Scots pines look like, the ordinary Scots pines or the Mugo pines, they have much longer needles. This is a Scots pine. You see how long the needles are on this? Whereas Bouvardensis pine have very, very small needles, especially if they've been left to grow in the container for a long, long time. So what did I do? If we come closer again, you will see that this is a rather unusual Bouvardensis. This, in fact, is a raft. I laid the tree on the side and I pulled the branches up to make a raft or a forest. And originally the raft had one, two, three, four, five, six, may have been even seven trees. Two or three died. I've left with four. This is also dying. And you can see the root ball on this side. It was laying on the side. And that's what's happened. Usually with pines, they don't tend to root from the trunk, but I will just take it out of the pot to see if in fact it has produced any roots. So let's undo the tree from the pot. And, okay, let's put it down and let's see what is underneath. Oh, there are no roots there. I can't see any roots there. But I'm going to take the whole thing out of the pot. I think I did this about 20 years ago because these are special pots that are commissioned from Yi Xing. And I will show you what's special about this pot. These are our special Heron's primitive pots that this Yi Xing pot maker made for me. And it should have a Heron stamp on it. These are special herons pots. Okay, so that's that. And I prized it up, but there are no roots which have grown from underneath the trunk, which just shows that pines don't air layer or root. So a lot of people tell me that pines can air layer, but I'm not convinced that they air layer. If it air layered, it would have rooted. So that is a wire, I think, which I use to wrap around the trunk. And this is another piece of wire that was used to wrap around this trunk. So this wire here is embedded in here, absolutely embedded. So I can take the rest of the wire out, it's serving no useful purpose and I try to give it that curly shape. So, this is now virtually raw material. We are back to what we call square one. I never waste anything. Look at these lovely silver birch seedlings. We have so many silver birch trees on the nursery as full grown trees and they scatter the seed. So I can use these for little mame bonsai. Okay, so let's not get distracted by that. So what can I do with this? So the first thing I will do 
is I'm going to clean the tree up. So no need to waste too much time on that. So cleaning up means that I will just take off all these dead little twigs. All these dead little twigs. And just by cleaning it, give me 10 or 15 minutes and we will see how the tree can be altered. So can you see that quite a few dead branches so we're going to take these off and clean it so we will come back after so here we are we've cleaned the tree up we've taken all the little dead twigs they're only little dead twigs they're not a lot of dead twigs so it's looking something but as a raft it's okay but as a clump it wouldn't work because the branches or the trunks are too far apart and we've checked and there are no roots underneath so I'll have to still keep it like this. Now as you know I'm not fussy about the four and these odd even numbers but because this part is not looking so healthy I may probably take that off. It's not doing anything but before I do that let me explore the different options. Now it's leaning too much like that I may have to reduce the height of the tree. What are the different options? I can wire it with thick wire and bring it forward like that. And with wire I can wire it to bring it like this. But rather than go to the extent of wiring it, what if I prop the tree up at a different angle? So when I put it in it's new pot. It will be at a different angle. How about doing this? This is where it gets very exciting. We have to explore all the different options. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. And let's see if I turn it on the other way. That's not too bad either. Now the four trunks may not work even if I did a little bit of dead gin that wouldn't work either four looks distinctly odd now this is a nice front this is quite a nice front so rather than cut it off completely let me just take a little bit off and see what it looks like That may look odd if it just sticks out like that, but I'll leave it for the time being. I may regret it if I take it off too soon. So, this is a possibility. So just changing the angle of planting will give it a new lease of life. So I'm going to proceed to rewire these, rewire these, and see what happens. So I'm going to wire these out. So. Now the wiring is going to take a lot of time, but I can't have a YouTube video that runs into four or five hours just showing me doing detailed wiring. I will just show you how I'm going to do this bit and then I will do the rest in my own leisure and then you can see the end result. I'm not going to cheat at all. This is not cheating. I'm going to do it all, but I don't want to take up too much video time. So, right, so I'm going to wire those two branches again, two branch principle. So, so in future I'm going to make sure that these wires don't get left in the trunk because we've already got enough character on the trunk I don't need more so let's just anchor this wire first before I proceed
again with these Bouverensis pines, just by taking the tips out, I can get it to bud back. So there's no worry about this. Amazing what a little bit of wire can do. It absolutely transforms the tree. Every little tree has to be wired, even these have to be wired. I'm just doing the rough wiring, I will have to refine the wiring. Wiring takes a lot of concentration, so if I'm not talking very much, uh, you've got to excuse me. I'm just flattening the pads. There's a bit of gin there, natural gin. Once that's polished up, it will look quite nice.
That's a nice little righty train itself, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to do a separate video fairly soon about literati because literati is one of the loves of my life and uh, I haven't really gone into any great depth about literati because it's such a I wouldn't say esoteric but it's more a philosophical uh, approach to bonsai that one really needs to give it a lot of you know, justice to it. Take it to the back, let's see what it looks like at the back. Maybe in the front again. How old is this tree, Pio? This tree, because most of these bovernesses were purchased when I came here in the early 80s. So it must have been a young plant in 1986 when I came here. Mind you, before I came to Herons, I was purchasing bovernesses trees from the continent, from Holland. There was a Dutch grower who grew a lot of bovernesses. And I literally cleared out his nursery. I <laughs> virtually took every bovernense that he had on the nursery so much so that he didn't have any left to sell <laughs> so on the nursery you'll find a couple of hundred bovernense they all date back from 1990 when I used to go to Holland to source conifers as an amateur and talking of that trip to Holland in 1980 I was telling Josh only the other day that this grower used to have lots of conifers and in Europe and in, in fact many other nurseries most of the conifers are sold by height they say that you know 30 centimeter tree costs so much 50 centimeter costs so much 60 centimeters cost so much and one meter would cost so much so I used to walk around the nursery and I used to point I want this I want that and on one occasion this poor nurseryman, he nearly died of fright because I went around with my secateurs and I was pruning off all these trees. So trees which are about man high, nearly 1.6 meter high, 1.4 meter high, I was pruning it down to one meter. He said, what are you doing? He said, you won't get any cheaper, you know, because he sells by height. I said, no, I'm paying for the full 1.6 meter high, but I don't want to carry all that surplus stuff back to England so I'm cutting it off so then he, <laughs> he set his mind at rest but I still remember his face he thought that I was going to get it cheap by cutting the trees down but I wouldn't do such a thing <laughs> so that tree let me just see I think that is enough there with literati, this principle of less is more, I'm going to talk about less is more when I do that literati video. So this tree, if I can get a plastic bag, just hold on a minute, let the camera keep running. Now each tree has to look like a literati. So if I separate the tree at the back, look at it. This has become a nice literati in its own right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The height is right, got a bit of a twist, got a bit of a gin. I still haven't decided what to do with that. I may take it off, but I don't want to foreclose any options. So that is that one done. That didn't take long, it's only taken like 20 minutes. And now let's see what we're going to do with this one. This one, because it's like the principal tree, I have to make it taller. So, I don't want it to foul this other tree either. So, let me take that down and take this down. Oh, very nice. 
So I'm going to wire these. I may have to wire it without the camera running, otherwise you're going to waste a lot of camera time. But as I say, trust me, I'm not going to do any cheating. I'm going to literally wire everything in sight and then you'll see the end result. So we've wired this side. This side is almost done. We've wired a bit of this. Lots more wiring to do. Maybe that. There's always a temptation to have too much. We have to always remember that literati is about sparseness. If there's too much, it won't work. So, I think I may have to reduce this side. I know I took all the trouble to wire this bit. This bit, I think, is going to have to come off. Okay, you see, I'm going to cut it off. You videoing? Mm -hmm. Good. See, that makes it look a bit simpler, not so cluttered. This is going to be ginned. Some more wiring to do there. Some more wiring to do there. So this is done, I think. This is too dense. And then this side has still got to be done, so this is going to be done later on. So we've done two thirds of the tree and that's only taken not even an hour, not even an hour. So we've got a triple literati, literati raft. That's a turn up for the books. <laughs> you couldn't have planned it, you know, you couldn't have planned it. I may try a little bit of ginning there to see what it looks like. If it looks okay, I may keep it, but it's no point keeping it just for the sake of keeping it. I'll see what it looks like. Uh, and we'll take it from there. I think that gin is too, too tall. Just see what I'm doing. I'm just removing the bark. You see, when you leave the wires on the trunk to make it curly, the ginning effects can be quite dramatic because you're going to get the spiral effect, spiral gin. Wait till I ginned it completely, you will then see the effect. I'll then decide whether to keep it or not. But we've got that far. And then we've got to refine this. Is this much too dense? I've got to thin this out. Okay, so we've got quite far with this. Right, so I'm pleased with it so far. So all that years of work, what was a no hope almost, has given it a new lease of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll tr try and complete it tomorrow. So we did an hour's work on this only yesterday and in one hour we transformed the two trunks here and Josh has done something to remove the bark and see if that gin works, I'm not sure. Just to show when you leave wire on and you then strip the bark you get that spiral effect which is quite nice. Now. Let's look at those two trees first before we go any further because I think we can improve those a little more before we look at the third tree. Now, I was looking long and hard at this tree here. This 
tree, although the gin looks very nice, if you come close, it's a beautiful gin, it's a spiral gin. But for some reason, it doesn't really fit with the composition. So if you go to the back, if you look at the tree with the gin there, and if I remove the gin, you see the effect? I think it looks better without. So I think despite having grown that gin all those years, I don't think I need it. I think I'm tempted to keep both, but I won't even keep both. I'll remove the whole thing. There. Hmm? Now that it's gone. A little tanuki. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can make a small tanuki. Keep it, nothing is wasted. We will put a small juniper on that yeah. and use it for tanuki. Why not? Beautiful. So we got rid of that. Now the other thing which bothers me is this bit. That's another little spiral branch that I cut off, but it's spoiling the line of the tree. So sometimes, you know, you say, oh, I've taken all the trouble to create it. Why get rid of it? But in this situation, it doesn't really suit the design. So without, looks much better. Yeah. So that comes off as well. So let's get rid of that. Maybe use this for a small mommy tanuki. The other thing which bothers me, I don't know whether I should keep this branch, but I might or I might not, it's too long. This is okay there. This has to be wide flat. That, well, I'll probably keep that, I need to wire that, okay. All right, I've rationalized these. This I'm not sure, I may keep it, I may remove it. Then it comes to this side. This side, this branch here looks nice, but again, I don't think it needs it. This also is a bit too long, so get rid of that. That's all I need. Even this, I don't think I need this. So important to remember that in making literati, literati is derived from the old Zen approach to bonsai where the famous expression, less is more, is absolutely relevant. Never more so than with literati trees, because literati trees embody the Zen spirit or the Chan. I will talk about literati, as I said, and all this approach to Zen culture and Chan culture. But suffice it to say, I will just talk about the concept of less is more. This branch also bothers me. It's a lovely branch, but does it do anything? It's a beautiful branch. But if it doesn't suit the design of this tree, I might get rid of it. I'll keep it for a while. Now, how do I finish the apex? I need to give it a twist somehow. It's too full. I need to lighten it. That as a crown would be a bit too thin. Let's get rid of this. And 
then we will use a fairly thick piece of wire and create a crown over there. So let us proceed with that. So there's a lot of fine wiring to do and look at that beautiful literati shape. When I like it, then it must be nice. Usually I'm very critical of my own work and I've got Josh here, our cameraman and my volunteer. <clears throat> He's doing a lovely bit of wiring work. So we're wiring every little twig. Every little twig has to be wired. So we are still wiring. Quite a bit more to do. It's all fine wiring that I'm seeing too. So every bit of fine wiring again the basics, two branch principle, one branch there and another branch here. So I'm still trying to find everything in pairs. Let's have a look. Fine one to do. Okay. It's creating the apex of the third trunk. One branch, two branch. These fine branches and the fine wire, they're very prone to get uh, bitten into if you don't watch it during the summer. So the fine wire is very dangerous to use if you don't keep a close eye on, on it. It's one thing to leave wire embedded in the trunk, but usually branches we don't like that going too much. So we've done the wiring on this side. If you look at the three trees together, this one, this one, and this one, the first impression is that this squat little tree is a bit too dense compared to the other two. And I was just considering whether to remove this branch to make it look more sparse. It's a possibility, but probably I will leave it for a while, live with it, and then come back to it. But that is one way of looking at that tree. But the shape repeats itself. The different heights, the tallest one in the middle, second one this side, so it's like a mother, daughter and a son. Three trees like that. So let's proceed to pot it. While we're talking of pots, originally, if you remember, oh, by the way, the only foliage we removed is this lot. If you come here, look, this is what we removed. Not a lot, we removed that. So this is the original pot one of our special heron spots. Can you see? 
Heron's Bonzoi. <laughs> anyway, so, and this by the way is mycelium because it's a pine, the mycelium comes through the pot. So this is fungus. So that is that original pot. Now I have two possible pots to use. I could either use this drum pot if you look at it from low. I could use that or I could use this primitive. The primitive is a bit small I think. It may be unstable. It looks a bit small. It may not be able to stand up. And also because the root ball is quite big. I don't want to take too much root off. I will put it in this. So we proceed to tease the root. Just hang on a minute. I'll just show you how I'm going to tease it. Because this tree has been growing in here for about 15 years, a lot of debris has accumulated. A lot of this black sooty stuff is all leaf mold and organic matter which has got in there and I need to use a more open soil. So I'm going to do this and then pot it up in that mica pot. The roots are very strong, very healthy. This is the soil you would find pine trees growing in the wild. If you go to the Surrey area where we get a lot of pines, most of them grow in peatland. Those of you who live in the UK, places like Backshot and Reading, there's a lot of peaty areas where pines grow in abundance. And this is the sort of natural soil they grow in. So it's all very well to talk about using Akadama and all these sophisticated soils. But if you observe nature and see how pines grow in nature, and then copy what happens in nature, you can't go far wrong. So as with everything in life, much of it is common sense. Certain people like to peddle their own ideas and show how clever they are. but. It's not always based on the facts that you will find locally. It's one thing to transplant the ideas from a foreign country to your own situation, but very often it's best to use <coughs> what is local to you. Right, I carry on doing this. I don't need to. I tried this primitive pot first, but it was far too small for that tree. But luckily, I have another primitive, slightly bigger. These were all made in Yixing for me back in the year 2000, 21 years or 22 years ago when I went to Yixing. So this pot fits perfectly. This drum pot, I think, was too heavy. Although drum pots are good for literati, this is too heavy, too deep. With this primitive pot, because it flares out, it gives a feeling of lightness and airiness. You notice that I prop this tree up at this angle, because if I didn't prop it up, it would be lying flat, it wouldn't look quite right. So I put a little flower pot in there and prop it up. Now, I'm just saying to myself, if I'm propping it up like this, I don't want to necessarily fill soil at the bottom. I will leave that pot there just to prop the tree up and fill the rest with soil. Nothing wrong with that. So let's prepare the pot and I'll show you what we do. Okay. So although this is just a primitive pot, you notice that it's wonky on the rim and choosing the right front for this pot is quite critical because as you look around, the wonkiness is not consistent it is more wonky in some places than others. So you want the wonky effect to be more prominent when you choose the front. So I think this is a nice front because this is quite wonky like that. Remember to put the pot there and then we will pop the tree in. Now it's become a bit lighter.
I know it's more leaning that side. I'm not sure whether I should take some root off from here. I might do. Let's cut off a chunk of root from there. Remember what I told you, this was grown initially as a raft, but the roots didn't come on the trunk, so there are no roots under the trunk. So the roots are still on the root ball here. I'm putting the pot to prop the tree up. So I can still see the wonkiness. I don't think I will need that gin. It looks a bit odd. Position is not too bad. That should be okay. Okay, so now let's show you what I'm going to pot. This is a Japanese soil called Hyuga, and I like to use it underneath the pines because it helps the drainage and it's also a very light, airy soil which pines like. So I put that right at the bottom. Because it's such an expensive stuff, I don't, don't want to waste any of it. I will tie the tree in. Okay, the rest is just filling soil. So for the soil, have you had a look? We put more Akadama than we would normally put. So this is the soil we use, our standard bonsai compost. So that's all we're going to do. And the next shot is when I've potted it up and then we'll put some more. So after about two and a half hours work, this is the final product of the discarded raft Bouvernensis pine, which had four, originally had six or eight trunks. There were four live ones, we got rid of one. I'm not going to keep that. I don't think that fits there. I'll just keep it for a while, but I don't think we need that. Uh, so it's a classic Chinese style literati, the Bunjin, the original Chinese uh, literati. Talking of the pots, that primitive gives it a light airy feeling because it's a free and easy tree and it splays out it looks nice and airy if you use the formal drum pot if you go low and look at it it is too formal for this tree this composition is very informal and full of life and vitality and if you use a formal drum pot some something doesn't look quite right so I'm glad we didn't use this pot and we use this one instead, this primitive. So there you go. That's the finished product. And I must say, I haven't enjoyed making uh, a group like this for a long, long time. Because I love literati, this suited me down to the ground. So I hope you've enjoyed this as well and enjoyed this transformation. So there you go. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do another little video in the next couple of days. These were the gins that came off this tree. This was a gin growing here. 
we got that off. This was growing there, I didn't want it. So all these little spiral gins, which the wire was wrapped around the tree, have caused the spiraling marks. So when Peter Chan puts wire in the trunk, this is the outcome after about 20 or 30 years. You get this bat, natural driftwood like this, like this, you see? The spiral causes it to produce that lovely effect. And this bleaching is by the sun. And I'm going to do a video in the next couple of days. I'm not throwing that away. We are going to do a little tanuki, wrapping a juniper around that. And we'll make a tanuki bonsai. So that's left for another day. So, and may I remind you, this is all we removed. We didn't remove much. So enjoy this. Let's let the camera play against it. Do you want to turn that? This is the front, of course. This is the back. And because it's in a round pot, someone may prefer to look at it this way, although this is not really. And look at the detail. This is the raft, you see? The root ball is there, and the trunk was laid on the side, and the apex was taken up this way. So this was the whole tree. These were the side branches. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, six branches that we used, three of which were discarded and we were left with these three. So there you go. After 20 years, it has finally resurrected and took on a new form and a new life. Lovely, lovely. Let me take some still shots.